Good morning, I am Satya, interviewee for today's interview with Dr. Siva. Uh, he is a lecturer uh, bioinformatics in faculty of biotech department. Uh, before uh, we proceed to the interview, I would like to introduce all my batchmates, I would say. Uh, Kang Chahal, the director, Boon Lee, audio recorder, Ilin, the video recorder, Kogili Shuri, the editor, and, my, and me, I'm the interviewee. Uh, so, this is an assignment uh, for our English for professional purpose studies. So, we shall begin with the interview today. So, uh, hello, doctor. Uh, so, before we start, can you, can you tell me about yourself? Uh, so, basically, um, my name is uh, Sivet Chandran. I'm an uh, ex alumni of this university. I did my foundation, degree, master's, PhD, all in Ames University. So I started, I, I first came to Ames in the year 2005. I graduated with my PhD in the year 2014. So I've been here very long. Uh, I, I teach more in subjects that's related to computing, uh, bioinformatics and others as well. Yeah, thank you. So he was a student and uh, he was an undergraduate, postgraduate as well. So okay, let's go to the questions and all that. Okay, uh, what part of your job do you find most challenging, sir? Challenging, um, I mean, every, every, every day is a challenge. Okay, that's why we are in the, in the field of research, because uh, without challenge, research will not be interesting. So every day, um, of course, taking lectures is a challenge, because you need to reach to the student. And um, reaching to students is, uh, it is not a simple task, because uh, when you uh, lecture, every year, year in, year out, students, new students will come in. And uh, you, you know the generation changes. You, students uh, who are used to lecture five years back and now, of course, the generation changes. So you must, uh, the challenge is to make sure that what you learn is up to date, that is one. Second, you must uh, also ensure that you deliver it in such a way that it is apt to the generation that you are teaching. So that is another uh, challenge. Uh, but all are pleasant challenges. I wouldn't say that it's a difficult challenge, it's a pleasant challenge. And um, in terms of research, keeping up with the global uh, trend, that is a challenge because you need to make sure that your research is up to par uh, so that you can, uh, you can compete, not compete, uh, I wouldn't say compete, you can, um, so you can make a name, yeah, you can make a name for yourself in that field. So if, if you do not keep, uh, if your research is not up to the par, then you will not uh, be recognized yeah, for their contribution. In, in research, you say like everything is in the advanced. advanced, so you have, yeah. to research, you have to make sure that. Research, research. Yeah, so those are the general uh, challenges. Of course, there are all, all minor challenges that come along with it, which uh, is normal. Yeah. So I guess uh, Sir is in great challenge uh, in, in teaching his life, in his experience in teaching and all that. So, um, Sir, what do you find most enjoyable? Most enjoyable. Okay, you asked a person who, who enjoys doing most of the things I do, okay. So, interacting with people. I love interacting with people. I love teaching because uh, I truly believe strong, I mean truly and strongly believe that uh, the way to learn, the best way to learn something is to teach. Okay, teaching is a learning experience. And, um, and uh, what I really enjoy is that because you are in the academic uh, field, you have to keep uh, updating your knowledge. So you keep studying, you keep updating. So it's a nice process of, uh, it is a good process of learning. This is what you say, lifelong learning. So this is one of the things I enjoy. And so of course, uh, research as well. I love doing research. research. Even today, you give me a pipe I will sit in the lab. <laughs> so that's something that, because not long ago I left research, so I, I really like going to the lab and doing research. He pointed uh, in a very clear thing, saying that uh, knowledge is a uh, continuous, continuous uh, education learning process. It's like you say, it's vast as ocean. Uh, say. Just to add on, and uh, learning never stops. It's not one way. Oh. Like you, you not only you teach in the process of teaching, you learn something from the students as well. So there's never such thing that I know everything. It's so as you learn, you will learn something as well because there's. Uh, sometimes you cannot 
when you take a subject, you cannot cover everything in a subject. Suddenly, a student might come across something that is more advanced in that subject that you are not aware of. So you also learn from students. Never, we should not have the ego that I know everything. So you should be able to accept when there's something new. You should be able to accept. It. Then that's where you, the real uh, learning process happens. So, doctor, um, are there any negative vibes or negative impacts uh, during your job and your working experience? I, I think it's like yin and yang, right? Yeah. There's no <laughs> good without the bad, and there's no bad without the good. So everything is that. Uh, but the most important thing is uh, to channel the negativity towards positivity. Uh, because without failures, there's no success. That's what you truly believe. In research, with most, if you notice, major breakthrough in research, many of the amazing discoveries that has come so far are all from accidents. A lot of the things that you have today are mostly accidental discoveries. So it is, it is um, the negative vibe will always be there. And uh, negative results will be there. Negative uh, problems will be there. But um, I think you should take it part of it's not that you only celebrate when good things happen and then when bad things happen, you, you sit and curse around. There's no point to it. So you must learn how to accept both. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but of course, we're trying to accept both good and bad. So like I hope any, I answered the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like any other uh, students and like any other people also, also faced his uh, good ways and also the bad ways in, in, in his life. So towards his success, so he managed uh, really well, I think. And so, uh, pointing to that, what educational preparation would you recommend for us who wants to advance in this field? All well, it depends because you see, biotech is a very vast field. Okay, some of them will be very interested in research. So of course, uh, you should keep reading. What are the advances in the field of biotechnology? Keep seeking uh, knowledge. Read. Uh, research articles, see what are the trends and find out all these uh, upcoming trends and keeping up with that. So that would be a good way of preparing yourself to become a researcher. Some of you may be interested in the business part of it. So then once you finish your degree in biotechnology, you should focus on getting some uh, business administration knowledge and stuff like that. Some of you might be interested in sales. So if you're interested in sales, make sure that you prepare yourself to um, meet people, convince people to buy the product. You need to train on your marketing skills and all that. So it all depends. Don't think that biotech means that. It's not biotech you will end up in the lab. Okay? You can even become a patent lawyer. You know, because all, all these patent lawyers, when you have a biotech knowledge and then after that you pursue a career as a patent lawyer, you go and do your law and then specialize in patent, uh, I mean uh, specialize yourself in becoming a patent lawyer. So then your knowledge in the field will be very helpful to become a good patent lawyer. So that means don't always limit yourself saying, oh, biotech is lab. Look for your inner interests. Go and specialize in that. So do whatever preparation that is necessary for that. If it's business administration and you prepare yourself with some knowledge on uh, business and uh, business development and stuff like that. If you're interested in laboratory, uh, you see, make sure you have a good hands-on skills when you go out there. And also keep reading literature so that you know, literature, I'm not talking about English literature, mm -hmm. I'm talking about scientific, scientific literature so that you will know what are the trends in the field of yeah. so That will be the best preparation. Okay, sir. Uh, and then, sir, you would like to know, so since you did your degree here, and, uh, you as a student, mm -hmm. how would you... Um, how do you feel another student and, all that, and how would you advise a student to maintain their success in, in, in the academic field? Um, okay, to be very frank, I was not a very bright student when I was in my degree. So I was somewhere there, a rich student. So I wouldn't say I was a very bright student. But, uh, uh, but I was a person who, who was always interested in research. So I never think that uh, this is something that, from my experience, uh, even from my SPM, I wasn't a very bright student when I did my SPM, but I, I scored the subjects that I was interested in better. So make sure that, don't think that, okay, you don't get A grade, your life is over, no, nothing like that. Uh, you, 
at every point of life there is a way don't give up at one point so if you have like a uh, interest in something go for it don't think oh i only got c's how am i going to make it no if you have interest in something you will excel in it doesn't matter what you score doesn't matter about all that of course it is good to score because uh, you know people always judge a book by its cover the first thing that people look at is probably your scroll your marks and all that but just in case if it's not good don't just give up don't go and uh, when you meet the person your the person who's interviewing you don't go there and and, and portray that i'm that average student that you see show that you are uh, driven you are you are interested in becoming someone sometimes that attitude can change a person's perception of you so it's never too late for anything there's always a lifeline somewhere around there just look for it and go for it you will you will excel when you do something with full of love you will excel in it. so uh, that's really beautiful for a student who actually keep themselves motivated to uh, that and so so here comes our final question so i think this is be an interesting question for him uh, sir if you would could start all over again yes would you change your career path in any way and why never <laughs> never, <laughs> never. That's never the source <laughs> no, because uh, see uh, i i had friends who came here to do uh, medicine and then when they don't get enough points uh, they opt for biotech and stuff like that but i was the person you can go and check you can go and check my registration form when i came for foundation my choice this first choice second choice third choice everything was biotechnology but that was my interest and i i, I wanted to do research so my my was a, from young i always was very fascinated with the term scientist i always wanted to become a scientist so by so biotechnology are scientists so so that is one of the so i will never go back to change my career path or so at the same time uh, i am not the person who would like to who regret my uh, choices because good or bad you made the choices so you face whatever it is it's no point turning back saying i wish i did it this way what you should look at is uh, i mean this is my opinion it's not necessarily the right way but uh, if you have already done something look at how you can what is the next thing you can do to make things better rather than thinking oh what if i did it this way it would have been this way because there's no way of knowing if you did it this way it would have there could be a chance where you, even you know you did it the right way but things could end up the other way around so always only look forward don't look backward that's my that's my theory or my principle in life so here we go i'm going to you i mean the final question uh i would say that a small a young boy's dream is to be a scientist and he uh, ended up with a biotechnology and he clearly said that biotechnologists are scientists so sir uh, is there anything else you think that we need to know nothing unless you want to know anything more about me <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, he actually uh, clear cut tell everything in detail uh, students like motivation and so when you already choose uh, something in your life that's it just whether good or bad just go and life no regrets on that so with that i would like to end my interview and thank you doctor thank you so much uh, and thank you